Thanks for coming here. Uh, I will get into the talk in just a second, but I'll introduce myself first. Uh, my name is Chris Ruppel. I work at Four Kitchens, um, who is one of your awesome sponsors for HTML5TX. Uh, we're a shop here in Austin that does uh, a lot of Drupal development, but a lot of front-end and mobile work, too. Um, and I am a front-end developer there, and that's my, uh, my thing. Um, so today, uh, we're going to talk about uh, CSS 3D transforms. D is everyone at least familiar or recognizes that word? Is this something you've seen before? No one. Great. So that's awesome. Um, so the title of this talk uh, is, you know what? Hold on. I'm going to plug in because this presentation destroys your computer's battery. Um, and we don't want that to happen in the middle. Bingo. All right, so this is called um, Unfolding the Box Model. And we're going to be exploring CSS 3D transforms. Um, and so obviously you uh, need a web browser. If, uh, these slides are on GitHub, by the way. I'll put the link up afterwards. Um, and everything is an example. I coded the entire thing. So everything that you're looking at, you can go inspect the source code of. This isn't Keynote or Reveal.js or anything like that. Um, it's just all transforms. So the entire thing is built using the technology we're discussing. Um, so uh, without further ado, uh, we've all uh, kind of uh, been doing this a while, I assume, or even if you're new, um, you have probably figured out that web design is the ever-evolving art of making your, uh, putting little boxes all over a screen, right? So here's our friend, the DOM element. Um, and the DOM element is created you know, with an HTML tag in the document, but when the browser parses that HTML, they become DOM elements in your web browser. And so like I said, uh, if you build web pages or build websites or build things on mobile phones, um, you're constantly trying to improve uh, the art of placing these little squares all over your page. Um, and you know, we've had plugins to do some of this work for us if you want to do animation or something like that. In the past, you relied on Flash or another uh, uh, proprietary thing. But um, now, we've got awesome web APIs that do a lot of this stuff for us. Uh, but in uh, past times, when we wanted to organize these squares on the web page, we had very limited options. Of course, you have the box model itself, um, the, the margin, the border, and the padding of an element. Um, and we're not going to talk a whole lot about those today, um, but they do uh, interact with these transforms regardless, so you do have to take them into consideration. Um, but the main two ways that we would put things all over web pages were floats. Um, and so you can see uh, this is floated right compared to all the content uh, on the page. Or it's floated left, and now it's floated right. Um, so you had uh, floats, and you could go back and forth, but that's not. Um, you know, that's not too many options. If you want to make a float that isn't a square, you were basically out of luck, or you had to make several elements that would uh, simulate that shape for you. Um, but then we had positioning also. Uh, so you've got positioning too, and you can, once you've floated something or put it on the page, you can move it up, you can move it down, you can move it left, and you, you, know, you can move it right too. So you've got up, down, left, right, um, uh, or X and Y, if you will. But now we've got a new uh, feature of CSS that unlocks a whole new dimension here. Um, I can't believe I did this. Hold on one second. We are going to, I'm going to pause here and I'm going to ask you guys who would like a small prop? I've got 3D glasses here. There's a few examples that actually work with 3D glasses, so just raise your hand. So this is like totally cheesy, but I thought it'd be fun to do anyway.
So I'll give everyone just one more second to put those glasses on. All right, so hopefully this is going to work well with this projector. I didn't like color test it or anything. Uh, but um, if you've got uh, the glasses on, um, you should actually be able to see like a level of dimension to, to this stuff. So yeah, there's not a lot of trick. It looks exactly like you know some retro 3D thing. It's got red on one side and blue on the other. And um, you know your glasses uh, basically hide one color from one eye and hide it from the other eye. And this is not news. You know we all know how 3D glasses work. But the important thing is that that 3D information is now embedded in this web browser because I'm using this 3D transform. So those things wouldn't have worked with SKU or anything like that uh, beforehand. But these glasses actually reveal that the uh, information is not, it doesn't just look 3D in the browser, it really is 3D. And so we've got a 3D engine built into uh, web browsers now, and more of them will add them uh, in the future. So I've got uh, one more example. You can keep those glasses on for just one second here. Uh, I'm going to go through the basics of 3D transforms. Um, they let you do two major things. Uh, one is translation, and if you're used to, these are 3D terms, but they're also the CSS properties, so it kind of helps. Translation in the x-axis moves you left and right. Translation in the y-axis moves you up and down. And translation in the z-axis moves you back and forth. If you've got those glasses, you should be able to see it popping out at you. So that's pretty cool, right? Um, now, there's no more demos for now. Uh, but at the end, we've got demos with the glasses. And I would not recommend keeping them on because they like hurt my head after a while. When I was debugging this, I had them on for a long time. Um, so uh, then you can also rotate things, though, with the, with the transforms. So you can rotate things in the x-axis. And that looks novel to us, right? That, that's like 3D motion in the browser. That's not normal. Um, you can do it in the y-axis as well. And then you can rotate on z which actually looks fairly mundane. Um, so if I back th through these again, uh, I'm going to go back. X and Y, when you're translating, look very normal and mundane. This is what we've always been doing. The Z axis is what was added, uh, which is why it looks so novel. But when you are rotating, uh, rotation along the X and Y axis is what we are gaining in the web browser, where we could already rotate things uh, in the Z axis before. Um, so those are the three axes of motion uh, that we as three-dimensional beings are used to. Um, and that's what you can do in CSS. And uh, when you put a couple settings onto the container element that is containing these uh, transformed uh, items, uh, you can make these uh, elements jump out of flatland. So we have a cube here. Uh, I'm going to get to this, but that is actually a six-sided uh, cube. Uh, that I made in CSS. Um, transform style is the first property that uh, I want to point out. This one just tells the browser, hey, set me up a 3D environment. Um, and you can have as many of these on the web page as you want, uh, memory limiting, um, or permitting, rather. Um, now, the second one is perspective. So does everyone know? Like when you're, when you're drawing something and everything like, they, they call it a vanishing point, like everything goes towards a pr particular spot. Um, so that actually happens in the web browser too. Uh, and when you change the perspective value, you can set how warped you want your transforms to be. So right now I've got a transform, or the perspective value is going from about 100 pixels to 3,000 pixels. Um, and the web standard says that you should specify perspective in pixels as if it is uh, a distance away from the, the front of your web page, which is a really abstract and weird thing to try and imagine. But um, this is kind of like new territory for the web browser, so it's OK. But um, you can see here that uh, there are many different options. It kind of looks like that, that old Hitchcock move where like he zoomed, zoomed out while moving towards the camera. Um, so you can. Uh, there's a wide range of motion here available, um, and then just I've found that like a thousand pixels is normally like what you kind of want it to look like. Um, and then there's perspective origin as well. So this cube is not transforming at all. I'm not rotating it or moving it. What I'm doing is I'm moving the vanishing point. Um, so 
uh, you know, like if it's, if, if it's, it's kind of like an isometric drawing where it can either fade to the left or the right, and you can pick a 3D point where everything is vanishing to um, using the perspective origin. And it's just like a, a coordinate system. Um, so all three of these go on the container element. Does anybody have any questions about that? Because I know it's like a brain full. Like, um, awesome. Then I'm going to be expecting some great stuff from all of you soon. <laughs> um, so now we've got another cube here. Uh, and I'm going to put uh, uh, properties on the actual cube itself now. So we looked at translate earlier. Um, if anyone is familiar with any 3D modeling or rendering systems, uh, the, the red, green, and blue represent um, red uh, X, Y, and Z, respectively. Um, and uh, when you're moving something in a 3D system, you would traditionally pull on these handles to move it in one axis. Uh, and so um, basically, those are the three directions that you can move it. Um, you've also got rotation. So these might kind of look familiar, too. Uh, these aren't actual handles, but these are the three axes upon which the cube can rotate. And finally, we've got a weird one here. It's um, back face visibility. Um, polygons, by tradition, in computer graphics are one-sided. So uh, it, is a, it is basically a flat surface with a front face, and it does not exist when it turns around and looks away from you, basically. So you can see the back of this guy because I've made back face visibility be on by default, but now I'm going to change it to hidden, and it disappears when it rotates. It's very hard to, like, I don't know, wrap my head around sometimes because I'm like, oh, where did my thing go? But I had, like turned it around 180 degrees and I couldn't find it. Um, so I'm going to turn, now this is a cube. The back faces are still hidden. Count the number of sides on this cube. You can only see two at a time. That's not because the sides of this cube are opaque. It's because it, you can't see the other faces when they're behind it. Now I'm going to add in the other faces of the cube now. Now you can see them when they're not facing you. The top and bottom count, because they're facing up and down, conveniently facing away from the camera, which is in between the two. Um, but if I move this cube, you know what? I'm not even going to do that because of this projector. Um, <laughs> but if you go get these slides, you can mess with these values live, and uh, you can see that the, the faces are all there, basically, even, even uh, though you can't see them in some modes. So those, that's those three. Um, and those are basically the only three properties that you need to put on an element in order to control uh, the 3D transforms. So a really awesome thing about transforms is just like all other CSS properties, they're inherited by children. So this lends a very real world aspect to the transforms if you set your markup up correctly. So you can think of them a lot like paper folds. Um, I've just got a bunch of spans in this sentence but it allows me to kind of like bend and shape these words. Um, it, 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 this is like the most basic example. So um, take this for example instead. Um, you know, we've all like made a cube out of paper, right? So you could do the same thing um, with divs. Whoops. Uh, so this cube is just sitting there, but these are actually attached and their transform origins are set up such that they bend at the like spot that they would bend as a piece of paper. So there's no magic here going on. This is just me setting up a few transform origins and, and then rotating all this stuff 90 degrees like you would in real life. The transforms are as simple as you imagine them to be when using paper. Um, you can make cooler things than like paper, though. Uh, so here's a good example, which is definitely skewed due to the resolution of the monitor. Uh, one side effect of, of me not ever checking this at a lower resolution is that uh, the container for some of these transforms is, is uh, the slide, the dimensions of the slide that I'm on. And because uh, uh, you position things uh, within like this 3D environment, basically, um, 
when you change the resolution of your screen if you don't use M's or if you've used pixel-based transforms in some cases, like someone who's presenting this presentation has, uh, then it can not scale up and down with the font size. Um, however, I did do a lot of this in M's just because I was trying to be a hipster, but now I actually had to bump my font size down like two notches just to give the presentation, so I'm very glad I did. Um, because we'd hit, be having a, a presentation not using these slides that I worked on <laughs> for a long time. Um, so here's a slinky. Uh, it actually is very, very easy to set up. This was one of the first things that I ever made with 3D transforms. Um, and this is just uh, a bunch of divs like nested within each other. Um, if you actually forget it. But it's like 50 divs all like right in a row. And all they, all they have is like, um, I wrote one CSS rule that says, if there is a segment inside a segment, rotate it five degrees. And that produces this. So it's really like not rocket science. Um, and you can do other things, just kind of, you know, rotate it more if you want. Um, or you can make other things that uh, require like nested transforms, like a solar system. Um, so this only needs uh, one div per, per celestial body. Uh, and that's awesome. That planet would be burned to a crisp. <laughs> but that's because, uh, the, again, because I changed the font size on this thing. So yeah, that moon just got eaten by the sun. Um, but you can see how nicely it orbits its planet, which orbits the sun. Um, and you can set up uh, you know, endless transforms in this regard. Oh, that's awesome. It just appeared in the middle there again. Um, it looks totally cool at the normal font size. Um, so it looks totally cool anyway, though, right? Uh, the, uh, so it's pretty handy. You can make, like, very rich and dynamic effects. These are literally only one div. That sun is just, you know, some box shadow, a background gradient, um, and that kind of stuff, and border radius as well. Um, so there's nothing like fancy going on it. There's no graphics except for the, the galaxy, like the, the background. Um, and I just ruined the big reveal on that one. Uh, you can also incorporate transform images in, uh, transforms into images themselves. So uh, this is actually a bunch of elements sitting on top of a, a picture of tile. And uh, you can script these. Um, so I made them dance a little. Um, uh, this is not practical, but you know you can do some pretty cool things. And and uh, if you consider like uh, the really weighty like flash movies that used to be created to like promo some like movie, oh, it's the Matrix 17, and we're gonna make you some crazy mysterious looking thing. You know you can now do that that cool stuff like in the web browser without having someone to like you know, making them download a, bu a bunch of plugins and wait for it to load and do all that. Because uh, this stuff is just like right in your web browser for you. Um, and then you can also combine transforms with other CSS to make other interesting effects. Uh, so this one is combining with the blur filter. Um, and it is also kind of lagging just because of the slide deck, but I've got another demo of this online somewhere else. Um, and also, I did set this up with Content Editable just to prove uh, uh, that it's not any hocus pocus or like images. So this is all like live stuff that you, you can, this is HTML that you can edit, um, which, it's pretty cool. Like this isn't super practical, but you know it's fun. We're uh, this is a conference. We're not here to learn about work. Uh, uh, and so back to our humble little friend, the DOM element. Um, we now have a whole new world for it to explore. Uh, it can go in new directions. It can translate. Uh, it can rotate. And you can even rotate it on a different axis than the middle of it. And then as we talked about before, you can uh, change. You can make it look like the real world. You can make it look very surreal. Um, and you can do other things that we have yet to discover, because if there's anything that's sure, it's that, or is anything that's for certain, 
is that once you publish a web standard, someone finds a way to use it in a, a completely new method that no one ever imagined. Uh, so uh, I'm really excited to see this one start maturing and get into a bunch of browsers. Um, you can definitely do this in uh, uh, Chrome and Safari and Firefox right now, and I assume everyone else, and IE10 maybe, uh, and I s assume everyone else is definitely working on it because, um, well, because I want them to be, because it's a really cool uh, <laughs> web standard. Um, so I've got a bunch of uh, other links and resources here uh, if we want to look through some of them. Um, uh, this one's actually pretty cool, and you may have just seen it because it was <coughs> making the rounds lately uh, the last week or two. Um, this is a, a demo of a first-person shooter in Transforms. Woo! That's not happy when I'm using two monitors. But you can see here that like, I'm navigating through a 3D world. Like I can jump. I can't kill anything, though. But props to this guy for using Half-Life 2 barrels. So this is all just with CSS. And you're moving around. Um, Actually, there's a lot more to this than you'd think because there's no such thing as a camera. That's actually a really good point to bring up. There's no, uh, there's no um, way to move the viewer in a, in a transform, in a CSS transform. You would have to move the entire world. So the camera would be like a base element, which then everything else is sitting inside. Um, so this is actually a lot harder than it looks uh, compared to all the little demos that I just showed. Um, but it's really cool stuff. And I mean, you're going to, now, when you open a web page, you used to like, oh, I'm expecting some graphics to load. And now, nowadays, when you open a web page, what do you do? Everyone like shrinks the window, right? And um, you know, like next year, when you open a web page, you're going to like start walking around within the environment that you're creating. And uh, so it's pretty cool. Um, I'm really excited to see this stuff uh, mature. Glad my Wi-Fi is working. This is a book, a, a book that uh, Google made. Um, whoa. So you can see all that stuff unfolding there. Um, like these are all transforms driven off of. I don't know how they did that, actually. <laughs> because there's a difference between, like, a lot of the examples I just showed you are just switching between classes. And so you can use CSS transitions to make a smooth, well, a transition between those two. Uh, but this is actually checking where my mouse is and doing all sorts of stuff like that. So you're basically running an animation based on the amount by which I've opened the book which is pretty impressive. Um, there we go. YouTube. I, I imagine they probably use JavaScript to flip through. I imagine they use some JavaScript. I mean, they do like have to. I'm sure this is mostly JavaScript. But they definitely use transforms to make yeah. the, the 3D effect. Yeah. Um, so I actually saw Tab Atkins mention this the other day. Uh, he wants to revamp the. Um, the animations spec and merge it with touch events, or they're related in some way because he uh, described how when you like pull to refresh on your phone or something like that, what you're doing is you're actually seeing an animation that is not time-based, but it is progress-based, and it is measuring how much, uh, what percentage of your gesture you are finished with, and so. Um, there's actually murmurs of uh, merging a bunch of these visual effects along with some sort of touch API so that you can do that. You can basically run animations not solely based on a time index, but based on a, uh, a user input index type thing, um, which is really cool stuff. It'll, it'll make everything feel more native you know, in, in the browser. Um, another demo. Much I'm sure I got, yeah, I got plenty of time here. Um, oh, yeah, we got more uh, 3D text here. Uh, this is uh, Simurai. Did this a long time ago. Um, 
if you want to yeah, put those glasses back on if you're so inclined. Um, so this is, uses that exact same effect. Uh, and maybe I can bump this up. Woo! So I'm, everyone can see that, right? It's, uh, it's like popping out of the page when I, when I mouse over it. Um, and this is a super easy effect. It's just a, a simple text shadow. And then the transforms naturally enlarge them proportionally with the, with the text itself. Um, because like I said, these are translating in 3D space. It's not like a, a gimmick that is being pulled off here for you. Um, clouds, these are neat. Uh, these are not volumetric clouds, but they sure do look it. Um, these are just uh, divs, basically, that are, again, inherited. There's basically like a, a, a global camera element that is being rotated according to the mouse position. And then um, all these other things are inside it, and so they all stay in one coordinate system. Um, and then you can change it to like, Michael Bay mode, explosions. <laughs> so. Um, this is uh, another very visually rich example, but it's very simple. Um, so these are like my favorite examples because like you could go and recode this in, in a day. It's, it's really not that bad. Um, here's something that's slightly practical uh, that actually belongs in the next tutorial section. Yeah, this is like a histogram, but this is a live histogram like in in the web browser. So you can see the div there, it's being highlighted. And um, this stuff is really not that bad to build. Like that tile example, that uses um, a, like a rectangular prism. Each one of those pieces of tile is actually a six-sided figure. And uh, you just kind of fold it like origami. Um, but this histogram is pretty cool because then you can, this guy, um, or it, I don't know who it is, but this person um, set this up to kind of like take the content of the div and then create that presentation from the content itself, uh, which, is, which is awesome. And then uh, here's another just neat eye candy type uh, one on code pen here. So this is using a bunch of, if, if Actually, it is code pen, so I can actually alter this one. Um, so you, you see here there's a scene element. Um, it's really tiny, but take my word for it, this, this word right here is scene. Um, that's basically the camera that we were talking about before. And then uh, we've got ball, ball, ring. I am going to slap a background. Uh, RGBA something or other here. Yay, I broke it. Thank you. There we go. So that may make that one a little clearer. This is actually uh, a bunch of elements like all just rotated a little off of each other. But because he didn't have a background um, initially, uh, it looks like a sphere because he's just using the border radius and a dotted border to create the effect of a sphere. Um, that's actually something worth admitting. Um, uh, you can create primitives um, as long as they're polygonal. So uh, if they are polygon based, um, they're easy to create. If they're like gonna be spleen based or Bezier, you know, nerves or anything like that, uh, then it's really hard to make still. Um, you can't make a ball easily um, or any curved surface. So uh, this is a great first step, I would say. But you're not going to be able to reproduce um, 3ds Max or Maya or anything like you know that that type of uh, create that type of model creation is not going to be possible yet uh, just using CSS. Um, I've got a couple other uh, just like intro. Uh, links in here. Um, I don't really want to go through them, but I will show this one because it has so many examples. Like, uh, 
just showing you how exactly you do all this stuff. So you can go in there and it shows you, I mean, like I'm not the first one to make a cube. Uh, but in fact, I'm really glad I didn't add these same sliders to my presentation because I'd never opened this page before. So there you go. You can kind of play with these uh, um, values. This makes the cube really flat. This makes it huge. <laughs> There we go. See how weird that looks? Yeah. So you can get it back to a pretty reasonable size, but it still is like kind of warpy. It's hard for me to tell because I'm looking up at this projector. Um, but this is a great resource, and these are all uh, in the slides. Um, does anybody have any questions? Yes. Yeah, um, so the question was, uh, maybe could we ever import OBJ files? And I'm not sure what system that's from, but uh, it basically, at, the time, at this time, you'd probably have to find uh, or create an interpreter in JavaScript to take some sort of other native 3D file into here, as much as I would love to do that. Because before I did web development, I did all 3D graphics and stuff like that. So. Um, this is actually a nice full circle kind of like, oh, I thought it was just, I wasted those years, but no, I did not. <laughs> now I understand all this. Um, uh, yeah, unfortunately, right now, you can just, uh, you can only use, like, elements themselves. Uh, yeah. Have you found there's no use uh, calculated the base using the form stuff? That's what's so hard to play with. Um, it's like yeah. Uh huh. So the question was about um, the matrix 3D transform, um, and and I mean that in terms of a like matrix of numbers that you input into CSS and then it transforms for you. Uh, and I have never um, done anything with that yet because I have so much fun just doing stuff with these basics, and we haven't had ever a client come to us that says like, I need this awesome 3D thing, and I really only am ever going to look at it in Safari and you know go do it. Uh, like, yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, so right now, I wouldn't be able to like pontificate on it, but um, I'm sure that someone's going to hook that up into JavaScript if they already haven't, because it's totally doable. And you can swap those numbers out on the fly. Um, and transforms are actually hardware accelerated. That's not something I mentioned, uh, but they, they are. Uh, and so what essentially that means is um, when you make a transform uh, or you transition between two transforms, um, it turns your element into an image for a minute and does stuff to an image of your element and then turns it back into a real DOM element afterwards. Um, you might notice this from time to time when you do a, a, a different type of transform and it like makes it bold while it moves it and then it unbolds it when it gets back over to where it was. You're seeing a glitch in, in hardware accelerated animation there. Um, and so uh, there are actually a couple of gotchas that I could just list off right now. You don't want to change um, uh, color or background color while you're doing a transform um, because then it's having, instead of, a, instead of keeping that as a static image and transforming an image, then it's like changing the DOM every time. And you're doing one of those nasty repaints uh, which people talk about uh, avoiding to make a snappy experience on your site. Any other questions? Yeah. If you were to texturize it? Yeah, okay, so the question was if I wanted to apply texture to the box, like how would I do that? And would you use a, a sprite or would you use something else? Um, and this question is particularly uh, uh, poignant because it's, um, that is how things were done in a performant way. Sprites, guys, did not come from the internet. <laughs> uh, they came from, uh, you know, video games and stuff like that a long, long time ago when, you know, like, we're talking Mario 1 and before. Uh, we're using sprites to, to make their video games run fast. 
Um, so in this case, unless you had a use case for making it load super fast and you needed all those images in one sprite, um, it's not going to affect the rendering of the transform uh, at all to combine the images. Um, normally we, we spray images on the internet in order to reduce HTTP requests, but uh, that doesn't have an effect ultimately on the transform itself. Yeah. Well, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm sure one day it probably will. Like if you've got a huge city that you wanted to, you know, like have, you had a texture that you're using all over the place or something like that, then definitely you'll be making sprites that are more reminiscent of video game sprites than of uh, typical website layout sprites. Um, yeah. Any other questions? No? Cool. Um, yeah, like I said, these are on uh, GitHub. And uh, that's my GitHub right there, uh, RUPL, and Twitter as well. And if you want to email me, I'm Chris at Four Kitchens. Um, and yeah, uh, these are already up on GitHub pages, so just go check it out if you want to grab them. Uh, thanks for coming to the presentation.